Highest run total on the slate, Brewers, Cubs, nine and a half. Ooh. So I'm going to go back to the same game. And actually, that game is a little tricky because of the weather going on. We already have, we're starting the season with Wrigley weather. So I'm just going to stay away from that for now. And I'm going to go back to Astros Angels, where I think the pitching matchup is a little overvalued, which means I do like the over here at eight and a half runs. And part of it is that I think Otani is not quite as good of a pitcher as people think. I think the same is true for Framber Valdez, who I tend to like for DFS and for strikeout props. But in terms of run prevention, I don't think he's as good as maybe he's, his ERA has been in the past. But then also at this time of year in April, it's cold in a lot of games, but that is not going to be true in Los Angeles, where it is pretty warm today and could be in the 80s during this game. So I think that the total may just be underestimating how much the ball is going to travel. Maybe there's some rust for the pitchers because it is opening day. But the big factor for me is the weather where like in Wrigley, we have cold weather. And in some of these other games, we have cold weather. In LA, I think that we could see the ball flying like it's the summertime because it is a hot day there. All right, Eric, uh, where are you going for this one? Yeah, if we were talking over-unders in general, I would definitely say under in that Brewers-Cubs game, assuming the weather cooperates. Uh, how can we have a nine and a half in a game that has Corbin Burns in it? Uh, that's beyond me. He's the best pitcher in the National League, maybe all of baseball. Last time he went to Wrigley Field, all he did was strike out 15 batters and tie the consecutive strikeout record. So that one, even though Kyle Hendricks isn't much at this stage in his career, no business being nine and a half. If we strictly want an under or an over, I think over seven and a half in that Cleveland uh, Kansas City game, even though Shane Bieber, I think, is going to do his part keeping it to the under. Zach Greinke at this stage of his career, I don't think he has much business pitching in a game that has that line set at seven and a half. Uh, his strikeout rate plummeted last season, dropped from 24 and a half all the way to 17.2% last year. I don't think there's much left in his arm. I don't think he's close to an opening day quality starter. I think it should be pretty easy for that total to get to eight, even with Shane Bieber on the other side. All right, Gary, and yeah, that uh, Cleveland KC game has a total of seven and a half. The next lowest is the Pirates and Cardinals at eight. Yeah, um, but if we're talking overs here, I think I do like the over in the Mets Nationals game. Again, East Coast weather, not super appealing to the over. I understand that, although this seems like it is one of the better weather spots on the East Coast starting this off. Um, this game, I believe, is now actually up to nine and a half, um, or it's been moving, kind of fluctuating between nine and nine and a half this throughout the morning. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that this pitching matchup is kind of sneaky terrible. I mean, Patrick Corbin, among the 39 qualified pitchers last season, had the highest ERA and highest FIP in baseball. I mean, his starting this game for the Nationals is really just out of, you know, sheer, I don't know desperation, embarrassment. I don't know what you want to call it at this point. Uh, and then Taylor McGill, I, I like Taylor McGill uh, in terms of his season long projections, but I do think people have this image of McGill coming up for the Mets, sort of coming out of nowhere and being a dominant force, which he was for his first nine or 10 starts. But his last seven starts of the season, he had a 6.56 FIP and he was giving up more than 3.2 home runs per nine. So I think the league started to figure him out a little bit his second time through. So I don't really trust either of these guys to keep the ball in the ballpark. So I think this does go over in Washington.